What's going on, y'all? So we are back again for another episode review of Real Housewives of Atlanta Season 9, Episode 3, um, Ghost of Boyfriend's Past. Okay, let me put this out here because I don't want to see it in the comments. You see it right at the beginning of the episode. I am not reviewing the AMAs. I am not even watching it, okay? There we go. Don't ask. No. Anyway, so we start this episode off with Sheree, Kenya, no, Sheree, Phaedra, and Portia meeting up, and they talking about everything that happened, you know, with Sheree at the um, mystery um, room thing with Sheree and Kenya. Kenya talking about this, and Kenya calling me a hoe, and then this and that, and da 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 And I'm sitting here like, okay, cool, fine. Um, <laughs> She was like... She out there trying to say that my mama name is on my lease and all this stuff and my house is in my mama name and that ain't even fair and that ain't right. And uh, Phaedra was like, why she always looking at people's stuff? Bitch, in that confessional, in that confessional, Cherise said, you know, for her to call me a hoe, we all know that Kenya fucked her way to the top of the Z list of the DVD rankings. I about fell the fuck out. Okay, um, anyway, so they going back and forth talking about that shit. They shading Kenya, shading each other, whatever. Then we see the scenes with Kenya and Matt working out together. And see, this is what I don't understand. You know, she's like, this is the man that I trust. I haven't felt this safe and trust in a long time or whatever. Some whatever she said. But, um, you know, she said this is the most sane person that's in her life or whatever being around these other women who do stuff and I'm just sitting here confused because for the last two episodes you was talking about how Portia you was you didn't want nothing to pop off at your event so that's why you didn't invite Portia because you didn't know how her behavior were so you told her to leave she left on her own but yet when Matt showed up you readily let him stay even though y'all talk for a second for the cameras you let him stay but this is the man you more scared of Portia or worried about what Portia gonna do but not about what Matt is gonna do mind you he has a history of being very aggressive to you more so than Portia does and he's kicking in your doors like I seen the video footage of him kicking in your house door kicking in other doors and you know being very very like he's gonna whoop your ass type of shit to you okay but you let him stay so i'm thinking you just have to have a dick to get a second chance with kenya i don't know but with him um you know i guess she was asking how do you think your mom feel um being that you're with me i'm older whatever she was like i guess his mama likes her and you know because he was saying how um, when they got to their first argument or one of their arguments, he was like, you know, don't scare off my um, daughter-in-law and stuff like that, which is cool. I, I respect the fact that the mother seems like she doesn't have a problem with it. And now he wants her to come to the family reunion and, you know, for them all to sit down and talk. Okay, so they back together. That's what's going to happen. Then we got this scene with Candy. She's at the candy factory going over some stuff with Ty. Don Juan coming there and I guess the other, you know, what's his name? Kwame or something. They come in there talking about what they need to get done. They need to have a little meeting or whatever. And right when they about to talk, this girl, Chris Kelly, comes in. I'm sitting here like, just like Don Juan face, like, the fuck is this? And she was like, hey, how y'all doing? I just wanted to come over. You know, I was in the studio and I wanted to say hi. You know, I never been over here. And, you know, Kelly, uh, Candy, like, no one just walks up in the chocolate, uh, in the chocolate factory, in the candy factory like this. So, you know, I'm just trying to see what exactly it is that she want. Girl, this is Block's girlfriend, okay, slash artist. Block is Riley's dad. And so she goes and she has a sit down with her. She's from Jamaica. She was like, I hope the bitch ain't finna get deported. I hope she got her green cards and all that so she can't get deported while she up here talking to me. And Chris Kelly goes on and say, you know, I was talking to him and been wanting to meet you when we first got together. And I've been telling him how come he has not, you know, put forth the effort to try to see his daughter. And then she was going to say, you know... Candy was like, I don't understand the situation myself. But then at first, it seemed like Chris was all on the good for that. But then she goes and say, you know, maybe it's something that you're giving off or whatever. And I looked at her like, bitch, at this moment in time, this is where you exit out of this conversation. Because Candy don't look like the type that's going to tell this nigga, no, you can't see your daughter. I said, uh-uh, this ain't going to fly. I'm going to be honest, this episode already feeling like a um, filler episode because the awards on, which is understandable because they didn't take a week off. But anyway, so 
Um, Kenya about to get, well, let's go back to the Candy and Chris Kelly situation. So they continue to have this conversation and Chris Kelly basically says she reached out on her own because she wants, she's about family and she wants them to have a relationship. She met Riley a couple of times and she was like, do you feel as though it's Riley that don't want to uh, reach out? She don't want to reach out. And Candy is basically saying, I'm not stopping her from reaching out, but I've tried to get um, Block involved a few years ago, and he never would want to, okay? And then they show a clip when Riley was, you know, talking about um, she don't care if she has a dad because she feel like she don't because he hasn't reached out. And it was very sad, all right? This is a young girl, a young girl that's developing, and she needs her father, and you literally have not seen her in three years, and your girlfriend is coming here on her own free will trying to work on the relationship that you should be doing yourself. Your girlfriend should not be coming over here trying to patch up stuff between you and your daughter, and then you probably telling her shit to make it seem that it's Candy's fault that's blocking it, and Candy had to let you know no it's not my fault and you know it's up to Riley if she wants to um meet him or not she's not stopping him but she don't think that Riley will want to do it Riley she said Riley is almost 14 years old bitch when she said that shit I said hold the fuck up I swear to god I thought Riley was at least 16 about to go on 17 you know she's been 13 ever since she was first on this show doing the fucking jerk in the um goddamn credits okay when Candy had the rooster hairdo okay I was like 13 going on 14 she is a grown looking ass child but that's understandable and She's at a point where she can decide what she wants, but she is also at a critical moment in her life where she needs both her parents. And, you know, we have too many kids out here that's going through stuff because they missing their fathers, okay? We have kids out here, we have sons that be, you know, doing certain stuff because they were not taught, you know, how to be a man or certain things from men that women can't teach. We have certain men out here that do stuff because they don't have the, um, they don't feel they're loved enough because the man is not in the house because the mom is taking the issues out on them. We have women out here who have daddy issues issues because the father was not there, you know, and why do you want to keep on continuing on this cycle? And like Carmen said, I understand what Chris Kelly is trying to do, but shouldn't block the daddy be here trying to patch this up. And I understand what Kelly is trying to do, but I just don't feel like it was her place, but I'm not going to fault her because she did look like she was coming with good intention. Then we move on to, um, you know, Kenya being on the road with, uh, you know, Matt, they driving eight hours, I think, to New York or whatever. And she's already over it. Matt looked, no, Matt looked like he was over it. They put two hours in the ride. She's still talking about how she don't want to do road shows. 3.5 hours, four hours, she went to sleep. That's when Matt looked like he was relieved. They still had two hours left at the six-hour point, And he, she was still talking. Girl, I said it wouldn't be me. Okay, not with her. And then <laughs> them dolls was over. They back there playing with each other. But I still think it's cute that they decided to have this, you know, instead of taking a flight, you know, deciding to drive so that they can use this time to talk, whatever, you know, really get to know each other. And then Sheree goes over there to Bob's house. Bob saying he's on his new course of life, you know, more fitness. He lost 20 pounds. He was like, look at my leg, look at my leg. Bob is hilarious. Okay. When we first met Bob, Bob was an asshole. All right. Now he's a hilarious motherfucker. That smoothie. Sheree was like, ugh. he said, this shit is horrible. <laughs> But it's cute to see them together. The, Sheree, you can say that y'all ain't fucked yet. Y'all either fucking or y'all will be fucking soon. But I understand your hesitation or trying to play like you hesitating to get back with him. Because he did say, you know, uh, I'm trying to move back in the house with you. She was like, uh-uh, boy, baby steps. This a big-ass baby right here. And I was like, Bob looked like he really be tossing bitches when he be fucking them, okay? But his thing is... He's 44, and it was the same age that his father died, so he's trying to be more concerned about his health and things like that so he can be around longer, which is understandable. But from Sheree's point, she's like, he still has not apologized for the infidelities and the stuff that he put the kids and her through, verbal abuse, kicking them out, and all that stuff. But it's good to see that they're working on their relationship now. So, you know, Cynthia going through her stuff with her divorce with Peter. Mallory and her mama comes over. They go outside and talk because Mallory dropped a bomb and said, look, girl, you know, I spoke to Peter. He called me a couple of times and all this stuff. And I said, 
Hold up. Because then Cynthia was like, you know, I have no problem with them being cool and all that shit. And I'm sitting here so like, y'all cool now after, you know, you and your mama is the one that um, hit the marriage license and all that stuff. And they out there sitting now. And I guess Mallory thought, you know, that um, Peter and Cynthia weren't ever going to be friends with, um, you know, each other. And Cynthia had to let them know, no, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I do want to be friends with Peter. I don't want to have no hate against him. And they started talking about her modeling career and some other shit. I don't care. Moving on from that, um, Phaedra and Portia meet up. And they go on hiking or jogging or whatever. They, Portia is thick than a bitch, okay? I don't care what nobody say. That is a badass bitch, okay? That body is everything, all right? The bitch may not be all the way there, but she is all the way there where it counts, okay? But uh, anyway, kind of a little too thick, but, you know, I can handle it. Anyway, moving on from that. So she's basically talking, because, you know, she had a little bit of health problems or whatever, so her doctor was telling her, you know, you need to get out here and work out a little bit, you know, all that stuff. So she's trying to heed that warning or whatever. So she's talking to Phaedra about... You know, she wants kids. She at this age that she wants to have a baby. She's talking to her ex-boyfriend, and she just wants his sperm. She don't want a relationship with him. She want to do a baby nuptial, and he already got two kids. His name is also Ty. We see the picture of him, and Ty was cute for Portia. Like, he looks age-appropriate. Like, they look like a real couple to me. I don't know, because all these other dudes that um Portia been on this show with, they just didn't look real to me, okay? Even Cordell, it just didn't look real. It looked like he genuinely, from that picture, it looked like he gen genuinely, you know, was in love with her or whatever and was there for her. But my thing is, when Portia was in that confessional, she was like, you know, Ty was my boyfriend when I was like 22. Hold on. 20... Bitch, we was in our 20s, okay? That's all it was. And, you know, when you in your early 20s, you ain't trying to be in love and all that stuff. You don't know what that means. You know, that's how she was doing it. And I said, what is it with these reality chicks? This is like the second reality chick that I done seen that's talking about some, they just want the man's sperm or their ex or whatever to have another baby. You know, Monique said that on Love and Hip Hop um, Hollywood. Now, she's saying it on here. Sage is looking at her like, girl, you dumb as shit, but okay. Um... Kenya finally, Kenya and Matt goes ahead and meet Matt's parents. And I said they was from New York, but actually they in Cincinnati, Ohio. So I corrected myself. I don't need to put it in the comments. All right. But the mama and the daddy and everybody else, they were so welcoming. They were so welcoming. Okay. Of course, the mama's going to have her little quips and stuff because, like she said, Matt is her favorite little baby boy. Because when, um, you know, she's, King, I don't know what Kenya said about Matt but then the mama said don't you be talking about my favorite baby boy and all that stuff that's my baby boy right there so what are your intentions for my baby boy you know King is talking making night uh, winning over the parents and all this stuff and it does seem like the parents like I said were taken to Kenya and she was you know doing what she had to do you know um even saying that he was a little aggressive sometimes, but the dad said, you know, when you're dealing with an alpha male, sometimes you have to learn how to tame an alpha male. And she was like, yeah, I'm an alpha female and all this stuff. But bitch, who was not here for Kenya was Hallison, okay? That was Matt's sister. As soon as Kenya came up in that door, she was just sitting there like, Every time she opened up her mouth to say something, it was like in her head she was saying bullshit, 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 okay? She was asking her, you know, aren't you, how do you feel about being a cougar? You know, how do you feel about this and how do you feel about that and bitch this? I was sitting here like, she was like, but why y'all taking her side? You know, ain't nobody talking about Matt. Ain't nobody on Matt's side. Mama was like, I'm talking here, okay? Let me talk, all right? Bitch, Allison just had a bug up her ass, but I just think she was... You know, she done looked at a few seasons of Real Housewives and already had her prejudgment going, you know, but <laughs> my sister wasn't here for it, okay? But it was cute that they all, you know, Kenya was trying to pay for it and pay for the meal. And um, Matt was like, no, nah, I got it. His daddy said, let her pay for it. I mean, she make more money than you. <laughs> hey, she offering, take it. So, Candy is taking Riley to the dentist and on her way to the dentist, she tells her about meeting up. Um, well, Chris Kelly coming out there meeting her and talking about her father and things of that such. And Riley is just so over it at this moment. She's saying, I don't really care. I don't care to meet him because it shouldn't be the girlfriend coming trying to 
fix the stuff, it should be him. So if I'm pretty sure if he was to reach out to Riley, she would listen. And that's all that she wants. She wants him to re uh, reach out. You are the parent. Reach out to me. I shouldn't have to search for you because this is your duty. This is your job. This is your responsibility to watch over your child and to take care of your child. I shouldn't have to go out trying to find you and force you to be in my life. You should be readily wanting to be in my life. And that's where Riley is coming from. And I'm, I'm glad I'm, I'm glad Candy did tell her and didn't keep it away, keep it from her. Um... <laughs> Portia, she's at a little kickboxing class, whatever the fuck she's at, sporting at Ivy Park, okay? But uh, moving on from that, Todd comes, okay? He's in D.C., but he comes down to Atlanta to visit, whatever. They start talking outside, and she telling him, you know, she's trying to start a family. He said, what does a family consist of for you? She was like, you know, kids. And I told my mama... Um, that I just really want some kids, not necessarily a relationship or marriage or whatever. I just want some kids. And she was like, how did she feel about it? I mean, she was a little iffy about it, but, you know, I did say that, you know, you would be a good candidate. Me and Todd was looking like, how you going to volunteer my sperm like that to your mama and tell her that I'm a candidate without talking to me first? And he was saying, I want to see you happy, you know, in a relationship where there is love and you have somebody that's going to be there with you. Not just you going out trying to get some sperm or whatever, because you can, if that's what you really want to do, you can go ahead and find other ways to have a child and not necessarily be in a relationship. But she was like, what, you want me to be a, um, find a stranger or some shit like that? And I'm sitting here like, Portia, you are just, you need Ty in your life because Ty got more sense than you. And I understand where she's coming from, but you just don't volunteer somebody else's sperm and expect just because y'all been in each other's lives for a minute that they obviously want to do something like this just because he already has kids and you think he's a good father. And like he said, so what? I'm going to be spending my time where the father going to be. Am I going to move down here or some shit like that? But he eventually said, you know, if I'm going to do something with somebody, I want to be in a relationship with them. And eventually I'm going to let you, I'm going to wing your heart back over. And I was like, oh, Ty, you need some, you need some stability in your life, Portia. You really do. But I do like Ty because even though, you know, from this first part uh, that I'm saying, he look, you know, you probably want to say he look corny, but I don't see it like that. He has genuine, genuine respect for Portia in his shows. He didn't run away or back away when she said something so silly like that. And um, it seems as if he's not trying to be there just for the cameras or whatever. Because if that's the case, I feel like if he was there for the cameras, he probably would be like, yeah, I'm down or whatever. You know, trying to get that. But no, he told her, true villains, I'm not down for this shit. No, not now. Girl, please. So Kenya, Matt, and the family, they at the family reunion. Everybody's getting along. Hallison, his sister, is still not for Kenya bullshit. She said, baby, I'm still not buying it. So they go and talk, and eventually she wins her over. They take family pictures, all that shit, whatever. But what I want to get to is this part at the end of the episode when Cherie, Sheree, and um, Candy met up to go work out. And then Candy sat down and had this conversation with Sheree about the situation that was going on with Riley. We all know, we all heard what was happening. But then they go and do a scene where RL is in the studio with his wife, well, his now wife, um, and Chris Kelly. And then here comes Block. First of all, you know this motherfucking ain't shit when he got the Chevrolet tattoo symbol tattooed on his neck on his throat what's the fucking point nigga i can't stand when people get emblems of cars tattooed on their body you look so fucking stupid okay what does it mean all right but um you come in and chris kelly has to tell them that you know i went over there and i talked to candy and basically they shutting him out no that is not how do you come over and start some stuff like bitch you're messy as fuck okay because that is not what happened all right candy is not shutting him out and riley ain't um forcing her she ain't forcing riley to shut him out either she gave, she told Riley what was going on. She told Chris what was going on. And therefore, it's le it left the situation up to him, okay? You got Candy sitting there crying to Sheree about how this man claimed that he did not even want to do nothing for the baby. 
um, how he didn't want no real relationship, how, you know, he was supposed to show up a few times and never showed up, how Riley is just really over it. And given Riley the way that she acts and stuff, you can tell that she really do think that, okay? It's nothing about Candy putting it in her mind, all right? Then, um... You know, she's crying her eyes out about it, and, you know, she's still trying to heed her aunt's words, and even though she couldn't stand block, trying to make it seem as if that, you know, if he wanted to come around, if he wanted her to call her, call him, and have this relationship, she would make Riley do it, or tell Riley about it so that they can happen. She's not trying to block anything, but then you're going to get your ass in a studio talking to RL and Lena, and then I'm, I'm, I'm liking the fact that she was asking, so you mean to tell me you don't take no part in this responsibility in this situation? situation or whatever because she just in there looking like bitch I'm not buying this stuff because he trying to make it seem as if he's always there or that he's the one being blocked out and he only missed coming over there to see Riley one time and all this shit and I'm sitting here like you're a fucking deadbeat okay you're a fucking deadbeat and I will believe her over you because like she said out of the eight years that Sheree known him no, um, Candy, you ain't never really hear her talking about him or bringing him around because he hasn't been around. Bitch, but when she said that Portia said that she overheard Block talking shit about her, you know, about Candy, it was like, how did Portia know him? <laughs> I mean, they used to play around. <laughs> sure, it was like, Portia used to fuck with him. <laughs> Bitch, the Ray was so fucking shady at that confessional. But I would have said the same thing. But Candy is mature because she was like, it was before I knew Portia, so it ain't no deal. It ain't, it ain't, it, it is what it is. But my thing is, I just don't understand how and why do men agree to be on these reality TV shows knowing damn well they are going to be painted and called out for their bullshit when it comes to their children. And thinking as if we the public gonna be on that side, especially when it comes to deadbeats, and we you got public record showing that you are a deadbeat, okay? And I can see if it was just Candy speaking on this, but when you heard Riley speak, you could tell that she don't give a shit about him either because she's hurt by him, okay? So, because sometimes, you know, the women do be trying to coerce the kids or put it in the minds of the kids that the daddy ain't shit or try to block them from the um daddy and all this stuff. But I don't feel like that's the situation. And that was very heartbreaking, you know, his lying ass. Anyway, that was the episode. Y'all tell me how y'all feel about it. I'm finna look at Married to Medicine. Peace, y'all. And one more thing. He literally said... I'm not chasing nobody. She the child. She's supposed to be coming after me. No, bitch. It don't work that fucking way, you ignorant fuck. It's your responsibility because you made that child. So, therefore, you supposed to automatically be there for that fucking child. You supposed to go after that. I, cu I couldn't believe that he literally said that. Ain't gonna say that next week. Child, y'all tell me how y'all fucking feel for real. I'll see y'all later.